YouTube as a go in the goat house is back and I got offensive line unit rankings for you guys today. We did quarterback rankings, running back rankings, receiver rankings. Those weren't units for the offensive line. I like doing units. You know, I like going by team, ranking 32 teams here based on their unit. You know, I see it so many times. One guy from the unit goes down and it kind of changes up everything. So I think really the offensive line is a prime example of something working uh, together in a unit. So that's why I decided to just rank the teams here. Uh, again, we did quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, so if you haven't seen any of those, go check them out. They're just uploaded the channel very recently, the last few days. Subscriber goals at 40K by the end of this year. Please subscribe to the channel to help us out. We also have daily sports videos, full NFL coverage in season, so I think it'll be worth it for you if you subscribe to us. Goathouse NFL, that's our Twitter, as you see in the top right, link in the description for that. And then clicking that like button, we much, much appreciate it. We work real hard here, so it'll help us out. But... To the offensive line rankings, we're going to go from worst to first, so we'll show eight at a time. I'll kind of explain them real quick here. Um, so here's the bottom eight. Unfortunately, the Dolphins are last. Um, you know, this offensive line is kind of a mess now, uh, and really the only guy that stands out to me on their offensive line, Laramie Tunsil. I mean, Kilgore's solid center, I suppose. Uh, who's going to fill the guard spot? That's a big question. I guess you got Jordan Mills on the right tackle. Uh, Michael Dieter is a rookie. I think he has a good chance of playing at guard. Uh, it's a little rough. I li- it's a- it's unfortunate because I really like Laramie Tunsil. He's a good young offensive lineman, left tackle. Um, so I really like him. It just pretty much the rest of this is a mess to me. Uh, number 31 is going to be the Houston Texans. Uh, you know, the good news is that some of those guys are still young, even from last year that struggled. So they can't really give up on them yet, and they still have some upside. I just still think shuffling them around – I don't know if it's the right answer, but at the same time, you couldn't really blame them because if your quarterback's getting beat up and you're losing because key games because the offensive line, I guess you have no choice. But um, it's going to be interesting to see who starts. They keep Davenport in there at tackle. They got Matt Khalil, who was an all pro his rookie year and then kind of really fell apart after that. Um, so which Matt Khalil are we going to get? I guess that could that could work out. You know, I guess it can't hurt. Um, you know, I think Nick Martin set at, at the center position. They drafted Titus Howard, who I like. I like his upside. Uh, it may take a little time, um, so I think he plays at right tackle. They, they could put him at left tackle too. I mean, th- the good thing is they got—I guess they got options. There's not the best options right now, but they'll get better each step of the way. You know, at, at next year they'll be better. The year after they'll be better. So uh, I got the Bengals at 30, and it's mainly just because of what's happening. You know, Bowling retired, just retired, and. Uh, I guess maybe he wasn't going to start anyways. Maybe that's what it was about. But um, And then you got Jonah Williams, who unfortunately, uh, season-ending surgery, so he's out for the year, and that was a good pick for them too. A surprise he fell to him. So the Bengals' offensive line was kind of looking on the up, but that's a big hit. Uh, I mean, I do like Cordy Glenn. He's nothing crazy. Uh, Billy Price struggled and was hurt last year, so what are we going to get from him? Not much going on after that. Bobby Hart, they gave that contract to, was a little surprising. Um, you know, I, it's they, they could struggle. Billy Price could get better. So they're we're pretty much in the same boat as the Texans and the Dolphins. I think the, those are the clear bottom three for me right now. Um, so that's that's why they are where they're at there. And then the Giants are at 29. You know, the left side of this line is pretty solid. Uh, the right side's pretty terrible. I've kind of said that last year, too, and I think it's really about the same. You know, the left side looks real good. Nate Solder and Will Hernandez. Uh, then other than that, not much going. I mean, Kevin Zeitler, I mean, how much of an impact, how much change is that? Uh, Mike Remmers has really struggled um, with the Vikings last year and the Panthers before that. So I, I think the Giants still need to improve that right side big time. Uh, the Jets are at 28. Yeah, it's not really an offensive line to get excited about here. Um, I like Beecham. Osemele, kind of off last year, but we know, I, I guess, what he's capable of. But there's a reason There's a reason he was available. Um, other than that, not much going for him. So they're down here at 28. The Vikings are at 27. I don't think as I, they, they could have had the worst offensive line in football last year. I'd say I'd give it to the Vikings worst last year. Uh, I think they're better this year. Uh, mainly because, well, they got their center, uh, top center in Garrett Bradbury in the draft, uh, but mainly because they're they're switching the whole scheme. They were running a gap scheme last year. Now they're running a zone scheme. So actually we could see them improving 
Um, you know, much more than this. They had to be the only team not running a zone scheme and offensive line remaining. So it's not too much of a surprise. Uh, they were the worst offensive line in football. So they're at 27. So they move up a little bit. Still need could use another piece or two there. The Cardinals at 26. You know, the Cardinals honestly could be worse than 26, but I think they pretty much simplify that offense and that and that spread air out attack they're going to run there with Kyler Murray. It might be an easy guy to block for too. And they did add some guys. I mean, across the board, it's not the worst-looking offensive line. Uh, Humphreys, they got Sweezy, Mason Cole, Justin Pugh, Marcus Gilbert, I expect to start. Um, so, you know, nothing great there. But their jobs may be a little easier than everyone thinks. The Chargers are at 25. Uh, another team, you know, pretty solid pieces here and there. But the right side of the line's a little, you know, shaky. Right tackle in particular there. Uh, left side I like. I like Okong. I like the the potential of Forrest Lamp. Uh, Mike Pouncey at center is pretty solid. Just the right side uh, can be retooled, I guess, for the future. We've seen the offensive line really struggle in that uh, playoff game against the Patriots. Next eight teams. I got the Raiders at 24 who struggled last year. Um, so I think they pick it up a little bit. Um, but I don't know if they pick it up a whole bunch. You know, Colt Miller still going to struggle, I think. Uh, and then, well, inc- Incognito's actually suspended, so maybe a little more struggling earlier in the season. Rodney Hudson I like, Gabe Jackson I like, and then Trent Brown I like, but we don't really know what we're going to get from him 100% yet. So I guess the right side's pretty good and the center's pretty good. The left side I, I think will struggle, which is the more important side usually, but we've seen a lot of pass rushers having success from the right side of their offensive line, left side of the defense. So I think they improve a little bit. Uh, I thought Brandon Parker was a really good run blocker, so I guess he's going to be hitting the bench now. I don't know. Maybe he wins the job. Well, maybe he can play some guard. I thought he was a good run blocker, pretty terrible in pass blocking. Uh, so Raiders are at 24. The Bucks are at 23. Who, I mean, you look at them at, on paper, and they seem like, you know, they're they're better than 23 probably. But they struggled last year. You know, they give a lot of pressure, you know, to their quarterback, whoever it was. He like Winston was really getting a lot of pressure. Uh, on him so but I mean they have the guys on their offensive line that I, th- I think they really could step up it just we don't really know what we're gonna get you know Donovan Smith I liked him as a prospect he's shown signs during his pro career um, but then struggled like last year maybe the year before too Ali Marpet um, I think he's pretty solid Jensen at center Earl Watford at right guard projected Demar Dotson Dotson's okay um, yeah, nothing spectacular here. They they struggle at times. I think a little better than last year. They were pretty. They were worse than twenty three last year, um, but I think I think a little better this year. The Falcons at twenty two. The Falcons really struggled last year on the offensive line. Not like super terrible, but they 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 struggled a bit. And they did the right thing in kind of revamping it. They go get two first round, you know, offensive linemen, which I think both they draft a little high, but at the same time they're both solid offensive linemen. But I think it actually could take another step down for just a second because you got some young guys in there um, that weren't like the greatest prospects, solid prospects. So they could struggle at first, but then it can just keep going up from there. So like next year, the, the offensive line should be better, even if they do struggle this year. Um, so I, I expect a little bit of a struggle. Uh, the Buffalo Bills at 21. Uh, the Bills struggled last year, but I think they get a little better. You know, I, I, it's a hard offensive line to predict who's going to start where. Um, Cody Ford, I liked him a lot. Are they going to play him at right tackle? Uh, even though they signed Inseki, are they going to play him at, at guard where it would be easy for him to play, but he played so well at the right tackle position for Oklahoma that, you know, the thing that stood out for me was how quick his feet were getting outside, not letting the, the pressure on the outside. That just kind of tells me he's a right tackle. So what the, we'll see what they do with him. I got them at 21. They still could struggle. They don't have any big names there, you know, guys that are a little young, so they could struggle here and there. Panthers at 20. I think they're heading in the right direction. Pretty good draft for their offensive line, um, but it's an offensive line that, that either beat up or beat up and struggled uh, over the last few years, I guess, especially last year. Uh, maybe they start Greg Little at left tackle. I think he's got some upside but could struggle right away. Uh, Darrell Williams needs to stay healthy. They get Paradis. That's a good center for them. Um, Taylor Moten could, he's solid, you know, he could pick it up a little bit, um, but it's just about staying healthy there. So they're at 20, 19's the lines. Their offensive line was a mess last year. There was guys in and out, but the, even when, even when most of the starters were in, they were randomly giving up an insane amount of pressure. Stafford was just getting killed. So kind of back and forth on them because on paper it looks pretty good, um, but can it stay healthy? 
Is it going to struggle at times like it did last year? I think it'll be better than last year. It'll probably worse than 19 last based off last year. This is kind of predicting this year. Uh, this, I mean, this is predicting this year for for these rankings. If you haven't figured that out yet, um, but a little scary, I guess, what I'm getting to based off what kind of happened last year. The Seahawks at 18. I guess we're kind of used to seeing the Seahawks at the bottom, and then they really improved their offensive line. You know, last year, end of the season, it eh, started to go down a little bit again. Uh, but I kind of expect them, them kind of in the middle of the pack here. They made a coaching change for last year, so that could explain why they were bumped up so much. So I guess they can continue to improve that. I just don't see any like big time improving again. They kind of made that jump last year. I think sticking around the same spot there. Uh, the Browns are at 17. Uh, they could get better. Honestly, the Browns could get better at their tackle positions. Uh, I really like their guards there. I like the, the interior offense line, I should say, guard through center. Um, Batonio and Corbett should pick it up. They got J.C. Treader at center. Just Robinson and Hubbard, the tackles. I mean, they could get better at those positions, but they're they're solid blockers. They're, Robinson's still like an unknown. Like, it looks like he's starting to pan out, but I like that they gave him a one-year deal because we really, not 100% sure we were going to get from him. So I kind of like that, but overall, it's a solid offensive line. Uh, next group of teams, San Francisco 49ers at 16. Uh, they were beat up last year, so hard to judge off last year. What I did like, uh, McGlinchey was they had him move in different spots and blocking from different positions, really, and I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, but he, I mean, I think they're expected to put him back at right tackle where they wanted to. Uh, Staley's great. Tomlinson's pretty solid. Richburg to center. You know, they could get better at that position, uh, center and right guard. You know, uh, but. Looks looks like a pretty solid offensive line, so I got them at 16. The Jags, they weren't 15 last year. They were worse than 15 last year, but they weren't healthy. I expect them to stay healthy. I think it's a pretty good offensive line if healthy. You know, Cam Robinson, left tackle. Uh, Norwell, he's a big-time guard. Linder at center. A.J. Can I think, is a very solid uh, right guard there. And I love the draft pick of Juwan Taylor, who I think will actually start at right tackle. I, I really like Juwan Taylor's game. Uh, I was very high on him in the draft. I don't really see... Unless there's the injury, to me, it doesn't sound like the injury is that concerning right now. Um, but if he's out there, I think he won't have too much too much problems. We've even seen offensive line linemen, you know, they really don't have much. The good ones don't have too much of a problem adjusting to the NFL. So I think he'll be fine. You know, just Cam Robinson needs to stay healthy. The whole thing needs to stay healthy. But if it's healthy, I think it's a pretty good offensive line. So they're at 15. The Rams at 14. They're probably top five based off last year, maybe top 10. They started to definitely top 10. But they started to go downhill at the end of the year, but then kind of picked it back up again there in the playoffs. Uh, but it's kind of aging. They lost Saffold. Um, they kind of got to rely on some guys they drafted last year. So and then and then you got Whitworth, who's great, but you know he's not going to get any better. You know his time might be almost done. He might be retiring soon. So. The offensive line could start to go downhill, but then the young guys getting here now, pretty good. So then they can start going back uphill once those guys learn. So a little bit of a step down for the Rams, but because of the the system, the coaching ability, and the, the big names they still got in there, they'll be okay still. The Broncos, I expect big improvements there at 13. I think Garrett Bowles, uh, I think he'll get better. he continue to get better. He's been nothing crazy yet but I, I think he'll continue to get better here uh Juwan James loved the loved the signing there at, at the right tackle position and they steal Dalton Reisner I think could be an instant guard starter we'll see because he was a tackle before but um Connor McGovern's McGovern's a very solid center uh Ronald Leary's a solid guard you know this is a solid offensive line it's struggled over the years at times but I think this is a year where it really steps up you know they needed that right tackle and they got Reisner who I think's a plug and play I think can be plug and plug and play guy here so, I like the Broncos where they're heading. Eagles at 12, and pretty much everybody I hear about, I hear talking about offensive line, I think they just, they, pretty much everybody says the Eagles are number one. So, I disagree with that, as you can see. I'm not everybody else here. Um, you know, the right side is just, just fantastic. Lane Johnson at right tackle is great. Brandon Brooks at right guard is great. Jason Kelsey Maybe the best center in football, in and out with injuries last year. Also, I mean, he's a beast because, I mean, he, he's really good. And he played through uh, multiple, multiple injuries at the same time. He actually said he thought about retiring. So, to me, that's a little scary. So It's a little scary what's going to happen this year. Um, so, that's something, you know, right away he's starting. Right away, I guess he starts the year as the best center in football, maybe. Up there, top three for sure. 
Um, so I guess keep all that in, in your mind. But on the left side, I don't know about the left side. I think, uh, you know, Sumalo I think at guard, I think they can get better there. And then Jason Peters, to me, he was once maybe one of the best left tackles in football. He's not really there anymore, and he's, you know, constantly getting hurt. And that's why they drafted Andre Dillard, who's a great fit. Um, to me, he wasn't a guy that's like a plug-and-play instantly ready to go. And it makes sense because they got Peters, but, I mean, I mean, what is what has Peters got for us? You know, how much does he have left here, and, and is he going to get hurt? I hate saying that. So Dillard may have to fill in right away. I don't think big-time struggles or anything, but to me, there's a lot of risk putting the Eagles, especially at one. I think the left side needs some work, and I think there could be injuries. The right side, I think, is just fantastic with Brooks and Johnson. I just think there's 11 really, really good offensive lines that I trust a little more. You know, maybe a couple of them have some injury concern too. Uh, the Ravens are at 11. Really, the only concern I have with this offense line is Orlando Brown, who was pretty impressive last year. But you, it's a guy you could see some struggle here and there. Um, second year. I love Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. They got Alex Lewis at left guard. Uh, Marshall Yonda, another great guard. And then Skuras ex- expect to be the center again. Um, so this is, a, this is a very solid offensive line. You know, Brown could struggle here and there. Other than that, it's it's solid. Uh, and then 10 is the Chiefs, another one that's solid all the way through. Uh, they lose Morris, but uh, they were starting to kind of go away from him anyways. I like Eric, Fish, Eric Fisher. Cameron Irving seems to be working out with them. Uh, and then Tardif, solid. Schwartz is one of the best in, in the game. So I think it's a very solid offensive line here. They're at 10. Titans at 9. And they have, they have some big-time pieces now in there. But I, I just don't know if it's, you know, I couldn't get them in that, that first page, that top 8, because I don't know if it's, you know, 100% complete here. That right side could struggle. Um, Conklin's at right tackle. I mean, who's going to start at right guard? I know they drafted Nate Davis. That's kind of a question mark. Conklin's been struggling, though. Uh, ben Jones is a solid center. Uh, and then the left side looks ridiculous. Taylor Luan, one of the best tackles, left tackles in football, and they get Roger Saffold, who is um, one of the best, maybe the best left guard in football. So, I mean, for, first glance, you look at Luan and Saffold, and you want to put this offense line at one maybe. Um, and then you look at Ben Jones too. But then you look at the right side, a little scary. That kind of drops them down a little bit. I think some other teams are a little more complete there. Got to love Taylor Luan, though. He's a funny guy. Uh, next eight... The Redskins. The Redskins are another team that it's risky putting them this high because they continue to get beat up. But, man, this offensive line is good if they're healthy. It's It may be number one if it's healthy. Trent Williams, I, I think, could be the best tackle in football if he's healthy. They got Eric Flowers. You know, I mean, that's a guy who struggled over the years. Um, and then Brandon Scherf, I like his game a lot. Got to stay healthy. I like Mark Morgan Moses at right tackle. So, I mean, this is a pretty complete offensive line. It's got to stay healthy. Again, if the, hundred, if the thing's fully healthy – to the top, but I got them at eight for now. The Steelers at seven. I mean, we know we're going to get for the Steelers. It's been pretty much the same guys forever now, except a uh, little, little different at right tackle. So I guess that could be somewhat of a concern there. Uh, they got Filer there at right tackle. So I guess I'll wait and see on that. But the rest of it's good. Um, do we see any kind of drop off in any of these guys that have been great to cash? I mean, I don't really expect it, but uh, it wouldn't be too out there if we start to see a little bit of a drop off maybe, but got them at seven. They're definitely one of the better offensive lines. Saints were one of the top offense lines last year. I got them at six. Really depends. It's kind of a wait and see here. Um, depends on who's playing at center. If it's Easton, I'm dropping him down from six because I don't think Easton's a good center. If it's McCoy, yeah, he's a rookie, but he's much. I already know he's much better. Um, so then I like I like the Saints a little higher. So kind of wait and see. Armstead, could he take a step down? I mean, looked really good last year. Pete. Andrews Pete needs to stay a little more consistent. You know, he was looking really promising earlier in his career last year, not so much. Warford's a very solid right guard, and Ryan Ramchek is probably the tackle of the future uh, in the end, not for the Saints. He, I mean, that's obvious for the NFL, maybe one of the best tackles of the future. So the Saints at six, looking forward to what, see what they do at center, or maybe they move. I think Easton's better at guard, so maybe Easton can play, and there was some talk about McCoy possibly playing guard, so maybe Pete's spot gets taken. I, I would rather go Pete and McCoy, though. Uh, in the starting uh, lineup there. So well, it's interesting. Well, we will see. Uh, I got the Packers at five. Uh, another one that needs to stay healthy. You know, another one that I probably could put a little higher if I trust them a little more to stay healthy. Well, mainly the right Balagas is kind of, you know, it's kind of, you almost, it's it's unfortunate to say, but you almost kind of wait for that guy to get hurt. Uh, Bakhtari is one of the better tackles, if not the best tackle. Lane Taylor, uh, they get Billy Turner in there. Lindsley at center, he's looking promising. 
Um, so I, I mean, I guess nothing spectacular besides I get the tackles back Tari and Balaga, but then Balaga, you know, he's great, but it just seems like he, he gets hurt a lot. So, uh, but I still got him at five cause it's a very good offensive line, very well coached offensive line too. Uh, the Chicago bears at four, uh, here. And it's a, it's a weird one too, because the bears, I was kind of, you know, when you hear the news that they're going to move Cody Whitehair away from center after a ridiculous year at center. It's kind of like, man, that offensive line was good last year with him there. You know, what's going to happen? But now you're adding James Daniels with Cody Whitehair, who I, I like James Daniels a lot. You know, it's almost like the Bears were better with him in last year because um, he didn't start off the year and they had to throw him in there and they looked really, really good. And they took him back out again uh, when everyone was healthy and they didn't struggle or anything, but they looked much better with him in there. Um, so now you get kind of the two for one. You get Whitehair and James Daniels. They're projected to move James Daniels to center. Uh, I was high on him in the draft. I liked him. I thought the Bears stole him in the draft. So that's great. Um, Charles Leno and Massey are the tackles, very solid tackles, very impressive last year. Uh, then Kyle Long, the right guard. It's it's strange to think that Kyle Long actually could be. There's no weak spot, but if Kyle Long could be the spot that's like, you know, uh, not the strength of this. That, that's pretty weird to think about because he's had a pretty good career and he's been pretty solid. So uh, I like that offensive line. Well, very well coached offensive line too. The Patriots had three. It really doesn't matter who they got in there. They, you know they're going to be really good. Uh, and they got Isaiah Wynn back. He's going to step in for them. I mean, we haven't seen him play yet, but pretty high on him in the pre-draft process. Uh, and they got other big guys that, you know, they lost Trent Brown, but they'll be okay. They got Marcus Cannon, Shaq Mason, Joe Thune. So, I mean, they're very, very well coached. Uh, and they'll be just fine. So they're at number three. The Colts, who I guess had the best offense line of la- the worst offense line two years ago, and the best offense line last year, they come in at two. Um, we'll see if they can repeat to get that number one. You know, they're it's pretty. I was pretty much back and forth. The Cowboys, Colts, um, still surprised at Braden Smith. I liked him in the draft, um, but as a guard, and it's still just surprised how well he played at right tackle. So we'll see if he can continue that. Uh, and then Quentin Nelson, just a beast too. I mean, all of those guys played very well last year, so um, they'll definitely they'll definitely continue to be great. Even if they don't really, I guess, repeat, they'll still be top tier. And the Cowboys at one, um, just a absolutely loaded offensive line here. Um, Tyron Smith has been one of the better tackles over the year. I mean, just man, the main thing here is you know a guy like Connor Williams. You know, they didn't really need him a couple years ago when they drafted him, but he was kind of sitting around, and now it's. Now it's you know paying off for them because I you know I think he has a he should be the starting left guard and I mean he can play multiple positions too so uh, and this this offense line continues to get better as long as it's health, healthy Frederick needs to stay healthy Zach Martin's one of the best guards in football Leo Collins is really coming along too he's had his struggles at times but um, just another guy that continuing to get better and they have they have some depth too so I, I just think the Cowboys are the most loaded offensive line here uh, you could argue Colts you could argue Patriots because whoever they put in there, they're just well coached enough to pretty much be at the top. Um, you know, the Bears, I really like too. The pack, like I said, the Packers, they're healthy. The Redskins, if they're healthy. The Eagles, if they're completely healthy. Um, the Saints, depending on, you know, who's in there, I guess, where. Uh, so we'll see. A lot of good offense lines in football, and some teams have some pretty bad ones, I guess, and that's, I guess, why they struggle at times. But that's going to do it for the offense line. Unit rankings, we did – Quarterback rankings, running back rankings, receiver rankings. If you haven't seen those, check them out. We've got plenty more position rankings to come. Please subscribe and click that like button if you haven't quite yet. It'll help us out a bunch to get to our goal. And then we have daily sports videos, full coverage for the upcoming NFL season. Cannot wait for that. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.